Hey, what up? It's this shirt. <laughs> this shirt has a long history on my channel that I don't have the time to explain. Just know that for years, this shirt has popped up in some way over the course of my career. I lost it for a minute there. That's why you haven't seen it. Literally, there's nothing else. Nothing else in relation to this shirt that stops me from wearing it. I used to wear this shirt so much that it used to infuriate my viewers at some point. They were like, please no more, no more of this shirt, no more. It's back, baby. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet? biscuit and welcome to the debauchery it's saturday happy saturday and saturday is when i do a little something on my channel called bat movies and a beat there is a lot <laughs> like coming up with my mouth holy crap bat movies and a beat the series on my channel where i talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on last week we talked about the movie that started in many ways my love of bad movies the oh so well made the man in 3b Oh boy, it's a mess, but oh so entertaining. So if you haven't checked out that video, be sure to check it out up above or check it out in the Bat Movies in a Beat playlist. We got a lot of videos now. I'm churning them out. I love doing this, I really do. <laughs> like watching crappy movies and trying to jot down all the reasons they're crappy, it's such like a mental exercise, I love it. Where's Waldo? But like, where's all the problems in this? This week, um, I have a history with this movie. <laughs> This movie has existed in my second gen K-pop psyche for over 10 years. A movie that has both perplexed and confused me since I was a freshman in high school, bro. That is the 2009 slasher action drama that is known as Ninja Assassin. I remember oh so vividly when Ninja Assassin came out. I was, again, a freshman in high school. I was friends with this awful girl <laughs> she was horrible bro i can't bring myself to truly hate her because she is un undeniably who got me into k-pop which got me into learning korean language because i didn't like singing songs and not knowing how to pronounce anything and the, you know the rest is history i know some people are like how did you become a beauty channel off of that it's a long road i don't have time um, anyway i remember this awful girl telling me how much she was excited to see this movie that had uh, a K-pop star as like a Hollywood lead in the movie. And that K-pop star is of course, early 2000s K-pop icon, P or Rain. Then fast forward a few months, maybe less than a year after that, I started to get more into K-pop proper and I found my first band that I like ever stand this hard and the last that I ever stand this hard. And that was N Black. For those of you K-pop youngins that don't really know the dynamic between Rain and Black and uh, one of the members being in this movie, I shall give you the rundown. Rain is a K-pop icon. He made a group called M Black. And Black has a member named Lee Jun or Lee Jun who is in Ninja Assassin with Rain. There's the dynamic. When I say I was a fan, that is a complete and utter understatement. I was a super stan of M Black. But when this movie came out, I didn't really know who In Black was yet. I don't think they had debuted yet. I, or if they had, they weren't out long enough for me to feel one way or another. But what happened was after In Black started making more music and I officially became a stan, that's when I would revisit this movie and watch it over and over and over again. One, because Rain was in it. And as a K-pop fan, I felt like I should support. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of abs. I was a hormonal 14 year old. Don't want to deny the obvious. I also had a strange attraction to Rain. I found him ugly and cute at the same time. Um, and this movie really, really was a good example of that. Like some frames I was like, Ugh, but others I was like, yes. Chop me up, daddy. I sounded so apprehensive saying that. <laughs> now with all the historical breakdown, I would like to first say that I at no point liked this movie. <laughs> Not because it wasn't in some ways visually entertaining, I guess. It was more so because I didn't know what the hell was going on. None of it made sense to me at all. I've seen this movie so many times. It's so, it's like kind of strange how many times I've seen this movie considering I don't like it. And, and in watching this movie several more times for this video, I had forgotten so much about this movie. I couldn't recall anything because it was just a big ball of nonsense. <laughs> At first I chalked it up to being young, so I wasn't like getting references and stuff or like I had a short attention span and I was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's it. Now as an adult, um, 
I couldn't understand anyone, native English speakers, not native English speakers. I didn't understand what anybody was talking about. I didn't really look into what the movie's supposed to be about since I can't understand the movie itself. So I just looked at all the blood and all the semi-naked rain and that was enough for me. So in an effort to even comment on this movie, I just went to Wikipedia and according to Wikipedia, the movie is about Rizo, Rain, who is a member of a secret clan of assassins known as the Ozunu. After the Ozunu kill his friend, however, Raizo breaks free from them and vanishes. Meanwhile, a secret agent, Mika, discovers a money trail linking the group to murders, and Mika and Raizo join forces to bring down the Ozunu forever. Now, having read this and watching the movie another time, I'm like, oh. So I read that, watched the movie one more time, but this time with subtitles, which is very important because even the native English speakers don't speak loud enough or enunciate and the non-native English speakers, I don't know what the hell is going on. So after like reading the movie, I'm like, okay, I guess that's, I guess that's what the movie's about. It shouldn't have taken me 10 years and reading the script to know that, but alas, that's what the movie's about. Because when you're listening to an hour and a half movie and you don't understand what's going on and you have no subtitles, eventually you just kind of float away up here. <laughs> Not to mention that, like it's bad audio, bad enunciation, weird volume fluctuations, and then just sheer WTFness visually from the movie. So I, I, so our movie begins and there is a room filled with Yakuza dudes. And one of them is getting like a traditional tattoo from this kind of wise wizard type dude who kind of speaks in long prose and just general vagueness. Irizumi does not hide the skin. The tattoo reveals the nature of the man. Or no illuminates in the book of five rings. And the farmer. Artist there is it between the needle and the skin, between Perhaps. the mark and the man. At some point, there's like an altercation between one of the Yakuza dudes and the old man in English. Also pretty sure that dude is Korean. <laughs> I don't know. Also further supplemented by that SoCal accent. So open it, dumbass. That accent is strong with this one, fool. Anyway, there's a letter delivered to one of the Yakuza dudes and the letter is filled with black sand. The Yakuza dudes are like, what the hell is this? But the old man, being the wise old man that he is, who knows everything, he's like, oh no. And he basically says it's an indicator that the ninja are coming. They go, I watched man open an envelope like that one. And they laugh, does you laugh now? <laughs> one of their blades struck here. I should have died but for an accident of birth. My heart is here on the other side. The Yakuza dudes mock him because he didn't want to say the word ninja. And then we have some very, very um, Netflix Death Note-esque gore, which only further makes me knock another strike against Death Note because holy crap, your gore graphics haven't gotten any better since Ninja Assassin. <laughs> but there's a lot of gore, uh, everyone dies. Next up, we're in Berlin where we meet Mika and Ryan. Mika is a forensic, researcher who has been researching a few cases of people being assassinated around the world. And she's already reached the conclusion that it's ninjas. Uh, we don't really get a good explanation about how she reached this conclusion. Like she tells us how like in history, people have paid a certain amount of money to get people killed. And that it's strange that there's people who are paying that same amount of money to kill people, so it must be ninjas. Do not know how she connected those two dots together, but go off sis. Of all the things that could be behind people dying, it must be ninja. But she assumes that the Yakuza dudes that died in the beginning of the movie in Osaka, speaking English, <laughs> were killed by the Ozunu clan of ninjas. Day before the assassination, $1,555,999.90 was transferred from the Bank of Shanghai. That is the exact market equivalent of 100 pounds of gold. Ninjas that despite being thousands of years old, this particular clan, and they haven't changed the amount of money it costs to kill a man, for whatever reason, felt the need to update their uh, methods of payments. They take wire transfers now. <laughs> okay, so now we meet Rizo, who lives his life on the run. He is a former member 
of the Ozunu clan who escaped them several years ago. More so like being away from them until he can can uh, have his own revenge, so to speak. At the beginning of the movie, he's living in a, in a barren apartment in Berlin, eating n noodles in boiling water. I don't see no soup bakes in that bad boy. So he's obviously had some trauma. <laughs> Throughout the movie, you're gonna see uh, weaving flashbacks of Rizo's time at the Ozunu clan when he was a small boy. Uh, I have to be this person, but <laughs> just from observation, this Japanese assassination organization is surprisingly diverse. Where do you find white kids at? <laughs> also, why is everyone still speaking English? Rizo is abused and taught to not feel basic human emotions. During his time here, he ends up befriending and eventually falling in love with the little girl in the clan, who is one of the few people to kind of show any form of human-like qualities. Eventually, he grows from a child into a... Ijun. Um... <laughs> I think I drooled on myself a little bit. Allow me to explain why that makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> Again, as a former A+, right, I was watching this movie in complete and utter confusion because Lee Jun at the time of this movie was around 21, 22 some odd years old, AKA a grown ass man. While Rain was maybe like a few years older, maybe like 27 or so. Why do you have two grown men that are that close in age playing like the older and the younger version? <laughs> Because they're both fully grown men, I was so confused. <laughs> Is this another dude that they're talking about? We're looking at the history of another guy, why? And then I realized, He's supposed to be the younger version of you? Y'all look nothing alike. Who is this ninja? The fact that I haven't said like ninja please yet in this video is truly a blessing for you guys. It's so easy. It's right there. It's baseline. But yeah, it was so weird. It's not like, it's not like Rizo, Rain Rizo is like in his 40s or something like that. And then it would make, it would make sense to have two grown men, but have a significant age gap. These are obviously two stages of the same man's life, but you're telling me that two men that are five years apart look different enough for them to be distinctly different time periods in each other's lives. You know what I mean? It's just so freaking weird. But anyway, he gets older and turns into Ijun. And he, again, falls in love with the girl who always showing him kindness, right? The thing is about her though, she's kind of a rebel. She she wants to run away. She wants to leave this predestined life that has been made for her. And then I saw this scene that honestly, I completely forgot about. Like it completely left my psyche. And then all of these memories started rushing back because Rizo Ijun does one particular line. And that is, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. When I tell you all of the you shouldn't do that memes came racking my brain all at once. This is a very obscure reference. And so I feel like no one is gonna find this as funny as I do, but bear with me. And Black First came out, they were really riding the coattails of Rain because why wouldn't you? Looking back on it, Ijun was an attention whore. <laughs> Oh my God, he was super prideful about it. And so because of that, the line, you shouldn't do that really became his like tagline for a second. And he would say it all the time. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> and oh my God, when I heard that line, I was like, fudge. I just remember the memes all over my Stan Tumblr account about him going, you shouldn't do that. I don't know, it just brought back a very, very specific memory for me and it just cracked me up. I was like literally hunched over, like holy crap, I forgot about that. But anyway, yeah, this girl that, that uh, Rizo is into is quite the rebel and she plans to run away from the Zunu clan. She's gonna escape. She wants Rizo, Baby Rain, Ijun, to go with her and he's like, nah. So she scales the wall and tries to break free only for her to be caught captured and ultimately uh, killed. Back in the present, Mika is uh, still on her ninja research-ish and now her research is starting to ruffle a few feathers because it's not just that she's trying to find ninjas, she's trying to break open a long held conspiracy. Alex Jones who, these ninjas have been hired by governments to take out like political adversaries against rival officials to bring down 
particular government regimes. And now that Mika is starting to uncover all that, they want her and her uh, boss, Ryan, to be silenced. They are destroying a very particular meticulous part of the system. Of course, who better to kill a uh, old girl than people that do it all the time? They send the ninjas after her, all right? That's a symbol that the ninjas only pop up when it's dark, right? So the lights go off at her apartment and she gets the envelope with black sand in it. That means the ninjas come in. Ninjas are afoot. But guess who comes to save the day just on time? It's my ninja Rizo. At no point do they actually explain why. <laughs> of all the people that the ninjas have come to kill, they never really explain why he came to save her. And which is funny because she even brings she even brings it up a few times. She's like, "Why did you save me? I don't understand. That doesn't make sense." And he and we're just supposed to be like, "Oh, not question that." He just really wanted to save this one particular person that he did not know prior to this. I think they try to insinuate that he did it because, quote, he knew her heart, but he had never met her. So. <laughs> also, we don't know where, like, Rizo's getting this insider information about who the Zunu is trying to kill next. So there's just, like, some random child that gives him a tip about who they're, ch who they're ch going after next. I don't know. But anyway, he's here to save the day. That's all that matters. Also, another gripe I forgot about is that for some reason this movie can't decide whether or not the ninja are supposed to be just humans that are very trained in the art of ninja or if they're like some superhuman entities like are they humans or are they just like the boogeyman because as i mentioned before there is this kind of stipulation that the ninjas come at in the dark they're humans they can come whatever like <laughs> but they kind of make it sound like they're vampires like they can't come unless it's dark outside they'll never stop until they get their prey there's parts where there's like chanting amongst the ninjas where they're like, brother, we want revenge, brother, brother, brother. Like they have these super heightened senses that is, if they can smell you, you're dead. They're wolves. You know, they're human beings. Are they supposed to, like, I don't understand. They have these regenerative, regenerative, is that the word? They can regenerate if they, if you don't kill them, they have the ability to like sit there and do ninja signs in which they can heal themselves. I don't know what the hell going on. Like they aren't superhuman entities. They just like, this is like their job. <laughs> it's their day job. I don't know, I'm overthinking it. Anyway, we have another flashback in which we figure out how Rizo actually left the clan. Basically he was doing another assassination. I've tried to avoid largely showing too much of the actual violent scenes of the movie. Some people don't wanna see all that blood and stuff and I totally understand. But there's just like, I gotta show this one. So if you don't wanna see it, feel free to skip. Um, I'll put the time somewhere on here. I kind of tickled. He's going after this one guy. He like stabs him in the neck and he's like, wow, that tickled. It's like, what the f What type of cheese is this, Gouda? The whole movie is just very fondue. It's very cheesy. I haven't really addressed that up until this point, but I'm sure you know at this point, like, come on, look at it. After getting stabbed, eventually one of them hurt. Like when he finally gets stabbed through the arm, he's like, wow, that was somewhat painful. Raizo is like now the number one understudy of the ninjas. Ozunu is like super proud. For Ninja to be like a secret clan, they brought a whole gaggle of ninjas to just like hang out. Anyway, up on this rooftop, Ozunu is like, I have one last task for you. I'm gonna need you to kill this girl who tried to escape us. Which if you recall, that's what they did to the girl that he loved when he was younger, when he was Iju. And this triggers the hell out of him, I guess. And he ends up instead attacking Ozunu. He ends up getting bruised and beaten pretty bad, but he's able to live because he falls off the building into some water and is able to mysteriously survive it. So now that he's away from the clan, he's actually on a run, but he's also wants revenge for the girl that they killed that he loved. Right. Now the whole next part is really confusing. Eventually Mika and Raizo team up together to take down the Ozuno. She ends up introducing him to her boss who uh, kidnaps him, but doesn't kidnap him and also does kidnap him. It's very confusing. But then he's like, no, I believe you Mika. I believe what you're saying. Just trust me on this. Don't really know why I should trust you on this, but okay. Gives Mika a tracking device for if she's ever in trouble. Rizo's like, hey, the ninjas are coming. They're like, oh, we will prepare for whatever. But they were like, no, they're here now. Everybody dies except Mika's dumbass, as if she has some 
superhuman agility. Obviously it's because it's a movie and she needs to live for the progression of the film. Um, at the end of this like big bloody brawl, Rizo tells Mika to get in the car as if there's not like 8 billion ninjas. I'm sure one of them has time cuz she'll be safe. Let her go alone and sit idle in a car. And she's just sitting there while Rizo's doing his uh, fighting whatnot. Eventually they realize, hey, we could like attack her cause common sense. Uh, she has her old like high action getaway situation. <laughs> the next like five minutes straight is just a bunch of fight scenes. So I don't really know what to say about that. That eventually end with Mika and uh, a very, very wounded Rizo driving away and escaping all the ninja. Uh, they find a place to rest for a bit, but the ninja are coming. So Mika turns the tracking device on, leaves it with Raizo. They end up taking Raizo all the way back to Japan on the ride there from Berlin, the ride <laughs> to Japan. I don't know, maybe he was in a cargo and a plane, I don't know. I don't know what carrier ninjas use. Are they Delta? Who knows? He does the little hand motions, crips on, uh, to, sorry. <laughs> to like heal himself. That's some stuff he learned uh, in the ninja village. He's brought back to Japan where they're going to sacrifice him much in the same way that the girl is sacrificed, the one that he loved. Um, there's like this really nice uh, scene where they just throw water on him. It's pretty nice. They uh, punch him in the stomach a few times, resulting in him throwing up the tracking device. Dun, 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 he swallowed it. And thus begins this kind of modern warfare between international police and a ninja clan. That is a sentence that I never thought would leave my mouth. Also, is anyone gonna explain to me how they got to Japan so quick? Like the police? Cause like the boss is there too, like what? <laughs> Cause again, weren't they in Berlin? I'm not supposed to think that hard, Kendall, just, just watch the movie. Anyway, again, there's this big like kind of battle. And then ultimately there's this like kind of final battle between Ozunu and Raizo. In which Mika is stabbed through the chest because she's a dumbass. Where is he? Where is he? Get away! Mika! No! Where is he? Like, what are you, what, 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 I guess? I mean, she hasn't died yet, so I guess she got overconfident. I don't know what to say. But Raizo is able to take down Izunu, and we're all like, oh no, Mika died. But lo and behold, just like the man in the beginning of the movie, she was born with a very specific and very rare birth defect in which her heart is on the wrong side. You just got stabbed through your body. <laughs> regardless of where, <laughs> like, but regardless, she lives. The movie ends with Raizo ascending the wall that his love once did trying to escape the Azunu clan. And he stares, smirking at the horizon, and then the credits roll. So here we are, bad movies and a beat complete. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, is this movie still as bad as I remember it being now that I have like, now that I actually know what's going on, if that makes sense. And the simple answer to that question is, yes, yes, yes it is, it's still awful. <laughs> like a lot of the things that I talked about then in this review are largely overshadowed by the sheer just showiness of it. It is an action film. Also, I don't really like action films, so I might not be fair in that, so. It's still very cheesecake. It's a lot of, it's a lot of cheddar. It's a lot of cheese in this. <laughs> but I feel like it's a good filler movie, if that makes sense. Like when you're doing dishes or something and you want something on and you don't really want to watch the movie. Yeah, I think this movie would serve well for that. Keeps it interesting, keeps you on your toes. You know, I can see its purpose, but um, actually watching it and truly enjoying it. Yeah, nah, that's not, uh, it's not me, dog. But that is all for today, folks. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video. If you like this video, follow me on all my social media, Instagram, Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. If you have any more suggestions for bad movies to beat, be sure to send them over my way in the comment section and I will see you guys later. Peace. Ow. Sorry.
Still hurts. Still bad. Na na na. Duck it.